also on the F sharp. So it's interesting that you were mentioning like with that one, without that one, right? It just doesn't have its own little sound. Yeah. I was recollecting after you left that when I, I went to see Ellie in um, Phoenix over at JT's house in the mid nineties, like 94, somewhere in that range. And he was showing me a set of his triple guitars and um, he was playing the low C and it just sounded great, you know? And then I was kind of like you, I was like, well, and, and I reached over and I like touched the high C and it just like, everything just kind of died out. And it was, it's just cause it was all leading up to that, that octave, right? right? But that's just the way he tunes, right? And so and it was funny after you left, I realized, oh yeah, this is something that's just normal that you're just maybe unfamiliar with because all the other plans you've played don't really have that same kind of right. technique or whatever. So yeah, that's, and, and that's interesting because when I was younger, that was kind of my, my goal was to get all the notes just to blend right from the low to high, you know, and that sort of thing. Resonate amongst them. Yeah, and what I call, we called it ring through. We like to have it ring through all of the octaves, right? Um, so that's, that's one thing that just point you to be aware of. That's kind of just the way he, he tunes in general. Um, second, there, there's a harmonic. So there's a, a fundamental that's like the lowest pitch, uh, just, just the general pitch you would hear, the, the lower pitch, and then you have the octave goes through the length of it, and then the harmonic goes through the, the width of it, right? So on a lot of Ellie's pans, he tunes an octave, and instead of a fifth, because traditionally, like a lot of them are fifths, there's like a B flat here and an F here. Da 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 da. You hear that difference? On the lower notes, since there's kind of a square rectangle look, they're actually narrower than normal. Like you would, if, if this was like a kind of a, a normal quote unquote F sharp, it'd be a little bit larger of an oval shape. Right. So since he squishes the sides of it, basically to accommodate all of these notes that are inside, right? Because it has a lot of notes in here, you have to make more space. So you squish this note up like this, and, but that prevents you really from tuning a fifth because the fifth requires more space. Okay. So what he typically did was he would tune an octave. So now you would have the fundamental pitch F sharp, octave F sharp, and then a second octave above that F sharp. So the only problem with that is, because theoretically it's great because it, everything's all F sharp. But the problem with it is this F sharp corresponds with this F sharp. And this, this E over here would correspond with that E. So this one's not such a problem because that E's way over here right. and it's not super close. The problems occur with not only on this F sharp, but on the F, like you notice probably on the F, it has kind of a similar problem. Right. And uh, I noticed it on the other, when I was tuning it, I believe Chris did it, yes, but did. you move the, the octave away. So you make it like a, an E flat or, or higher. You can make it F sharp, like on that one, you make it F sharp. On this one, you can maybe make it a G or a G sharp. Typically you take it lower though. <clears throat> So the problem with that is then you get kind of get this squirrely kind of, what is that other tone that's in there? Because normally your ear doesn't really hear a fifth, your ear doesn't really normally hear an octave. They kind of just wash away with the sound of the F sharp. So I think partly what you're also hearing is some of these imperfect resonating, resonating pitches, right? So um, what I, before I worked on this note, I just wanted to let you know, if I take it up to an F sharp, it might make this one sound bad. Which I hardly ever use. <laughs> okay. And then, and then, you know, if I, if I keep it the way it is, then you're either way, it's like one of those things. It's like either way, you're probably going to be disappointed with something. And that's the way the tuners are too. I mean, me and Chris were the same way. We just kind of come to the, to the conclusion. Well, we want to have all of these notes pretty much what they need to be. Right. Yeah. So, well, pers personally, yeah. when I, when I, may I? Yeah. When I hear a... Okay, that one right there. Yeah. It, it's got a really nice ring yeah. to it. That's a perfect example of a... To me, it sounds like a clean tone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of rattling the house. Yeah, yeah, it kind of, it kind of vibrates a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's another problem. Like I told you before, I've had problems with F sharps. That's frequently a problem. And that has sometimes to do with this octave is the same as this uh, fundamental. Yeah. And they're really close to each other. Um, the way I've solved that is I take this note and I make it sideways typically. For some reason, the, the way it reacts, 
Um, so how do you do that? You actually shape Oh, it? well, no, it would be before, like, when I'm when first making, laying everything out. When you're making The it. construction of it, yeah. Got it. So I wouldn't be able to flip it right now. Because <clears throat> it's just, at this point, it's like one of those things you just got to deal with it. Yeah. Um, so sometimes that occurs. It's weird. So when, when the octave is this way and that this one is faced this way, they're perpendicular with each other. Sometimes it works, but sometimes it gets that flutter. Ah, okay. It's almost impossible to get it out, like, if it's occurring. Well, I mean, some notes when I'm playing, I realize I have to hit softer mm -hmm. or I have to hit it harder. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> Getting to know the pans a little bit, yeah. Yeah, and whenever I hit that particular chord, I go oh, soft on this one, a little harder on that one, and this one, i got to hit it. And yeah. it's funny how your brain just learns that. Yeah. I'm about to hit that one. Oh, yeah, punch that. Yeah, right, right, exactly. You kind of get to know it. And yeah. Delicate on that one, hard on that one. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Like, first, it's really strange. Like, uh, the E's typically are usually okay. Um, this one has a little bit of that swingy kind of sound to it. Yeah, it was, but it's yeah, not it was too bad. really happy yeah. with that low E. It's, yeah. It sounds a little, it's always sounded a little dead to me. Yeah, it, it's okay. To me, to me. Uh, the G I found, and I'll show it to you later on the strobe. Um, the G, there's a resonating G in the skirt. And so I think that's why it never sounded like it was fully like resonating. Right. It might have like a, a muted sound. Right. It's because when you have a G in the skirt, uh, they kind of counteract each other a little bit. You know those magnetic signs we have some. Yeah. Sometimes that helps stop resonating. Yep. Yeah. You can. Yeah, it can help a little bit. Um, I found really the only way to really change it is to change the length of the skirt. But you can't really do that with with chrome. It'll just yeah obliterate the chrome. Yeah. Plus so, it's a shorter skirt. Yeah, so. plus it'll be shorter skirts and it'll throw everything out. <laughs> you have to redo the whole darn thing. So it's kind of like a non-starter. It's, it's, you can't really fix it that way. But that's that's ultimately the problem is the length of the skirt is resonating at a G-ish. Or there's some kind of, and I'll show it to you. You can actually see it on yeah. the screen. Um, anyway, so if you want, I can put this back to an F sharp and we can listen to it. Okay. And you can say, oh, I like it better or not. Where is it at now? It's, yeah, it's like a... Let's see, so F sharp, it would go down to a E natural. So if you can find an E, it's that one right there. It's like a flat E going this direction. It's almost like an E flat. You see that one going right there? So it's a sharp E flat and a flat E. Basically, Chris is just getting it out of the way. That's the, and, and I've been done that too. So you just kind of get that pitch away from the F sharp so that everything just starts to sound a little bit better. But yeah, so let me just bring it up to an F sharp and let's see what it sounds like. I mean, what do you think? Yeah. Okay. was originally so now that I'm fighting with it I'm like well maybe it was never an F sharp to begin with but uh, let's see what I can do
drum and and the way a drum uh, or a surface to me imagine i'm imagining oh like a regular drum set drum yeah like I'm, a head. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining an area that's giving you a vibration and, and it's a circular shape and i'm just imagining yeah. Yeah. how does a note actually get shaped and you describe a lateral or vertical kind of a, a pattern yes yeah. it's, it's, yeah it's a uh, it's kind of strange uh it's got a more of a teardrop shape to it sometimes. Okay. Like within these, you can kind of see it a little bit. So they're really not round. No, they're more ovalish. Yeah. Um, and then like where I'm hitting here, it's 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 an oval shape, but then you kind of flatten out spots to. It's it's almost like there's a string in there, and you're tightening the string. Oh, interesting. But there's it's more to that. It needs to have a certain curve for that that string to vibrate properly. And so sometimes the curve, like if you look at it just from a, like a top view, it would be like two strings in there, right? But if you looked at it from a side view, it's got a curve to it. And there's probably going to be like one side that's a little higher than the other side. We called it the bubble. So there's like through the length of this, typically there's one side that's slightly taller than the other side. And, and um, if it's completely concave, then it doesn't really want to vibrate properly. Oh, okay. It's like an arch, right? right. Arches, they're, they're rigid. So you kind of have to flatten one side a little bit. Oh, interesting. Yeah, which kind of allows it that 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 tone to vibrate. So, yeah, there's all sorts of peculiarities about it that, that are not obvious. Oh, yeah, it's it's not always you can't see it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And the only way you can really experience it, it there is uh, or figure it out is by doing the same procedure like multiple times. And after you do it like twenty or thirty times, you go, oh wait a minute. <laughs> I'm seeing like a, a rhythm to this, like I'm seeing a, a consistency here, a pattern, yeah. So, yeah, it's really strange. Well, let me see what I can do with this here.
this one went out. Sometimes the, the, the notes next to it will go out. Not too bad. Maybe a little flat. As I'm playing it, Dude. it might be, yeah, I might be hearing it sharp a little bit. Look at it there. If I look at it there on the screen, it is actually a little sharp. Like, Does yeah, sharp it mean it's slightly. traveling to the right? Actually, you know what? It did go sharp, so let me pull that down. This note and some of the others on this set are uh, tricky because instead of having a octave here and then a different kind of harmonic uh, through the width, he has frequently two two octaves, and sometimes those are difficult to navigate because uh, if you hit it here, it makes that one go sharp. If you hit it there, it makes that one go sharp, opposite you know, or flat if you go from the bottom. So next thing you next thing you know, you get all lost. Um, so sometimes that can be difficult. And also if they're not exactly in tune with each other, sometimes they flutter a little bit. So that's pretty close. That, better that, is, on your that is close. Yeah, so it was a little sharp too. tune with itself does it have more of a sound that you like yeah it sounds more like a note on its own yeah 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 it's because that that e flat was getting in your ear and your your ear and your brain were like oh there's something wrong <laughs> yeah. there's there's something wrong with this it's not an a f sharp it's not a c sharp so, so that's probably the best solution for now Thank you. 
actually tune them a little flat, just barely, because when you strike it, it kind of kind of goes sharp anyway. So like I was noticing on that, it shows just a little bit. You know, you can see when you hit it harder, it starts going the opposite direction. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it's good. It's a little funky, but I think you're probably gonna like it better. Yeah, well, it's it's a frequently played note, and <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. And sometimes you have to hit the high, high F just to high F sharp. So how did that G work out? Let me yeah, sure. if you play it with. I don't I don't mean I wouldn't notice it as being, but if you just play it one by one, yeah, it's more muted. Yeah, right? you, muted's a good word. Yeah, and so I was mentioning earlier, like if you play it there, everything looks like rock solid on in tune. But if you mute that note, by the way, I use this cloth because if I touch it with my hands, it warms it up and then it goes flat. Oh. So I always touch all the notes with a cloth. I, I forgot my gloves. So I just keep so it. So on a hot day? No. Okay. Hot day, everything uh, warms up evenly. I got it. And so everything just adjusts itself evenly. But when you have a specific warm spot, the, the metal freaks yeah. out. Yeah. So if you just kind of tap the screw, you can see right there, it's almost an exact G, just slightly sharp. So you're saying that the G resonates through the skirt? Yeah, there, there is a G in the skirt that was untuned. It just happens to be there. Okay. Yeah. And so if, if the skirt was muted with magnets or something, it's possible. Would, would that affect? If magnets can help, yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's all about the vibration, right? So yeah. a magnet, I think what you're talking about, like if you have like a flat magnet on it, like a- uh, A sign. Like a sign, yeah. That will mute it more than correct it. Yeah. So really the only thing that's gonna make that vibration slower or faster is but probably slower is by adding mass, right? So a you larger add, note. What's that? A larger note. Uh well a slower vibration. Right, a slower vibration. So yeah, either a larger, you know, sign or whatever will slow it down and maybe make it less than of a G, make it maybe like a F sharpish. Yeah. Uh, or you could just use thicker, fatter mallets or magnets, right? That just makes it makes the whole darn thing just move slower. Yeah. Um, and vibrate slower, um, but it's imperfect science. Sometimes it works, sometimes it it's doesn't. It's amazing how much the skirt makes a difference. Yeah, and the other problem too is like when you use a sign and you start covering up the skirt, then all the other notes start to get affected too. Like sometimes it just started sounding muted all over the place. Right. So it's again like, so sometimes like a bigger, stronger, fatter ma uh, magnet works better than a, a large sign kind of magnet. Okay. Um, I think Chris Wabish sometimes has even drilled a hole in these things and like put, <laughs> Put like washers and nuts on there to try to kind of oh, wow. weigh it down and slow everything down. But how did that C sharp come out? Oh, C sharp sounds great. Yeah, the C sharp, uh, the fifth was off too. So. That's rocking. It's got the fundamental, the octave, and the fifth all there. Also, if that's a note that you're hearing that like has a little bit of a uh, more sound. muted sound or a clunky sound, the, the B natural has three octaves here and it, it blends right night really right. nicely into that high B. <laughs> this one goes all the way up to the C sharp, but C sharp's a tighter note. So sometimes it has a nice, like smooth sound. And that's really part of the trouble with this steel drums is um, so trying much, to blend all those to so make much them, going on. Yeah, to make them all sound similar and, and, and even is really difficult sometimes. So that G is um, is what it is. Yeah, the G, well, you know, it's, it's basically perfectly in tune. <laughs> and so... Is it one of those that is just a muted sound, so you just have to strike it just a tiny bit harder? Uh... I mean, yeah, you can strike it a bit harder. But I think it pretty much all comes down to... Well, it doesn't sound bad either, that G on here. No. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, for me, it's like, if I was playing it with other notes in, with like a band or something like that, it's gonna be totally fine. But yeah, if you start to isolate it and be like, how did you bring a ring back into it? Because after, oh. after I touched it, it went thud. Oh yeah, no, that's that's. The, I mean, I wish I had the video on that one. I didn't. Um, but I had to. Uh, just so it's on the video. I think you pushed it up from the bottom. Did you push it up from the bottom? Uh huh. Okay, yeah. So it was pushed up from the bottom, so it was too tall. So again, it's like it has that arch problem again. So you essentially have to kind of make it flatter. So I, you know, just used my hammer here and I just pushed it down a lot, kind of where it was pushed up in the middle. And then of course, um, there's the octave or the octave areas on the ends. And then there's the, uh, the second octave, which is one, this one has a second octave G. So you can kind of see it's a little flatter here, a little flatter back here to, in order to make so that G. So this shorter octave is a higher. higher yeah, it's, a, it's two higher, octaves above the fundamental. G. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so you, like, like when you see it on the screen, each one of these lines represents an octave. So there's the fundamental octave, the, the octave here, and then there's the secondary, secondary uh, octave up there. So there's three represented on one note. And, and that's really the trick. Oh, you're talking about how do you get it to ring? Yeah, good question. <laughs> it's like, after a while, it's, it's a combination of... Um, experience uh and uh stick to itiveness stubbornness yeah stubbornness <laughs> right yeah exactly and um uh shape it's all shaping is a big issue yeah. so like i was saying sometimes it needs to have a flatter side and a bubble sometimes like you put the bubble on one side and you just can't get it to work and you know, then you switch it to make put the bubble on the other side all of a sudden it starts to work perfectly it's a fascinating challenge oh absolutely <laughs> endless challenge well, yeah. what's fun? I'm, I'm a tinker. I can yeah. fix anything. Yeah. I can take a car apart. Yeah. You know, I put it back together. Yeah. So I find it fascinating. Uh, just the dynamics, the harmonics, the shaping, the part you can't see. It's the imagination. Oh, absolutely. It, it yeah. It entertains your brain. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really exciting. And, you know, the other issue, too, is all of the tension that's involved with the steel. Right. So, like, again, Ellie makes his drums slightly different than other people. So Ellie makes his drums... Uh, frequently like he would use propane in right. order to get tension right uh, with heat yeah whereas most people don't use propane they're just using hammer hitting right. to create the tension right. so all of this area around the note also has to do with how the note's going to be responding to to when you tune it because yeah. there's all sorts of tensions around the note sure oh uh, it's just endless that it'll you know because that's the other thing too like i will work on somebody else's drum that they they made it themselves right and if they had a different idea of how the tension works in their head then I, I approach it and sometimes it's the exact opposite i'll hit it here expecting it to go sharp and then it goes flat i'm like wait <laughs> how did that happen yeah and it's just because they created their own system that, that works opposite but once you figure it out then you can kind of go okay that's what they're doing that's a that's fascinating that there's yeah. a different design that somebody else can create a another shape that you have to figure out yeah yeah, yeah. no it, it's really fascinating so. so when you built pans just mm -hmm for that period of time, your shape of a note and where you put those those strings of sounds yeah, yeah. are different than this. Instead of vertical lateral, how did you shape a note? Yeah, like for instance, I, I think I mentioned before, like I tend to like to put the octaves in line with each other. So if this one has an octave going this way, I like to have that one going oh, uh, so parallel ad with each other. Adjacent. Yeah, adjacent and, and parallel with each other rather than perpendicular. I just, I just find that when they're perpendicular, I, I have more problems tuning it and it has a lot oh. of that flutter sound. Okay. So I tend to have like, I have a smoother sound, but when you turn it sideways, that creates sometimes a little bit more of a darker sound out of the note. Well, you so. mentioned this has an octave here and an octave here. Yep. Is that true of your theory that you're talking about or is it this octave is matching this octave? Well, it's all, it all, so this octave matches that octave. There's a second octave here a higher and on this one i wouldn't have a second octave this one it's usually like a third or a fifth oh okay. so it's just it's not really yeah. part of the equation that's quite a math challenge. yeah and then also just the proximity of notes like this g going to that g if this g was moved over here then this one and that one might not respond right as cleanly or whatever <clears throat> so proximity has a lot to do with it it's pretty cool direction has a lot to do with it yeah it's very complicated 
Yes. And it's one of those things too, where you spend all this time building it. And at the very last minute you realize, oh, that one should have been turned this way or that, and there's nothing you can do. <laughs> so you have to start all over again, just oh my make another one and then change it the second time, you know, or whatever. So it's in the construction, you can't affect, can't change there's it. There's certain things, yeah, certain things are in the construction that okay. you can't ever change, you can't go back. And that's why like some people bring a pan to me and say, hey, can you fix that note? And I'm like, well, I wish I could, but there's nothing I can do just because it's in a bad spot, oh. there's, you know. Or the, the way it was hammered or con the construction of it initially Fascinating. was just really poor. Fascinating. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like somebody drives up with a Porsche, but there's like a, a Volkswagen a axle on it. You're like, they're like, can you fix the, the axle? Because it, it needs to work better. You're like, well, no, because <laughs> it's a Volkswagen axle. And like, say there's no parts available, right? Right. So you just have a Volkswagen axle. That's all I, you know, I can make it work like a Volkswagen axle. But Well, it's an interesting study that it took time for you to figure out, no, I can't fix that. No, I know. And that's part of experience too. Yeah. Is there certain, like, this is a perfect example. It's like, sorry, Curtis, I, I want it to ring more. I really do. But I mean, the skirt is part of the problem and there's nothing we can really do right. about that. Right. Yeah. So at some point you, you are able to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Early on in your career, you're always saying, yes, I can do it. Exactly. But after a while you're like, no, nope, sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Gotta give you the bad news. Oh, the other thing too is since I did work on this one a lot and the F sharp a lot, it might want to go out of tune faster. So you might notice even within a couple of weeks, like it goes sharp. Typically it goes sharp. Yeah. So if it starts going sharp, um, I would say play on it for like three months. Right. And then bring it back if you, if you notice any squirrely stuff. All right. Interesting.